In this first segment, let's take a look at what equalizers do. When you turn that knob that says bass, exactly what's happening there. Let's take a look. For this demonstration, I've got a signal generator that can make different tones or frequencies, and a spectrum analyzer that can listen to different frequencies. You can see across the bottom, bottom axis, we've got frequencies from 8 Hz to 125 to 1000 Hz to 16,000 Hz. And on our vertical axis, we've got volume. So this is the volume of frequencies. If I turn up a 1000 Hz frequency, there it is. You can see we've got about 40 minus 40 dB there of 1 kilohertz, 1000 Hz. I could move this down to 100 Hz. And there we go. We've got the same thing, 100 Hz. Or I could zip it up to higher than I can hear, 20,000 Hz. And you can see the analyzer is listening to that for us. It's telling us that we've got whatever that is, about minus 40 dB of 20,000 Hz. But that's not all that useful in our equalizer discussion. Although equalizers could boost and cut 1,000 Hz, they, they generally boost a bunch of frequencies around that point, not just one single frequency. So we really need some source that contains all frequencies. And that's called pink noise. Here's a pink noise sound, and what pink noise is, is just like I said, all volume, all frequencies at the same volume. So we got something that looks like that. Let me mute this equalizer here. Now you may say to yourself, well, how come this frequency here is almost, you know, these lows from 125 hertz on down are 10 dB hotter than uh, the frequencies the rest of the way up, and that's a flaw in this PAS frequency analyzer software. It just seems to boost those low frequencies even when you've got a perfectly flat reference signal. So just use your imagination. When you see that a little bit high down there, it's probably about flat. It won't really affect us in our discussion. All right, so we've got our, our same volume at all frequencies signal here, and let's EQ it. I'm going to open up a simple equalizer. This is the VT3 equalizer from Massey plugins, and it's just bass, mid, and treble. If we do something like boost the treble, you can see we're boosting the volume of those frequencies. So from about 3000 hertz on up, we boosted the volume of those frequencies. There it goes down, boosting up. We can also cut them. We're cutting the volume of those high frequencies. Same thing with the bass. We boost the bass, boost boosting the volume of those frequencies or cutting cutting the volume of those frequencies and then mid-range we can cut mid-range or boost mid-range so you get the idea that's what an equalizer does all these fancy boxes and controls we're gonna see as we keep going are still doing just that now if you were watching closely you probably noticed that there was something funny about this when I boosted the mids when I cut the mids the VT3 carved a hole in the mids at about 2.5 kilohertz there. But when I boosted the mids, something different happened. The high frequencies boosted a bit, as well as the mids centered around about 1.8 kilohertz. That's the kind of thing that these vintage or good sounding equalizers will do. They're not really as surgical. They're not doing exactly, you know, boosting mids at the textbook definition mid-range of 1 kilohertz. They're doing something a little bit different that may sound better. Still feels like mids, but it includes something else, or there's some clever distortion or dipping they're doing at a different frequency to trick your ear. And there's a lot to this EQing thing, and uh, this is a cool-sounding EQ because of what it does, and you just, you just witnessed it. Let's see what it sounds like on some music. So if I take those same controls and try the treble boost... See it on the analyzer here. I brought those those highs up, and same thing with the lows. Mid range. And when I play this track in my car, it's a little dull. It needs a little mid range excitement. It's got a little too much thickness down here in the 250 hertz range, which you can see from our graph. That's exactly what's happening. So to fix it, we need to change the volume of those frequencies relative to the others to get it kind of in the same range. 
A lot of modern mastered music is pretty even in volume. Every frequency is represented at around the same volume. You definitely don't want to take classical music and force it into that mold. won't sound good. Or individual tracks. Don't try, try to make your kick drum have every single frequency represented at about the same volume. But a dense, you know, rock, pop, dance mix, that's kind of the current trend to have them all about the same volume. So although this mix is not that dense, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. For now, let's um, see if we can get rid of this, uh, what is it, 20 dB difference between the mids and the low mids. Uh, that's causing it to sound a little muddy in my car. Option one would be to boost some mids and highs. I don't know about you, that sounds, that sounds pretty good in my headphones. Or option two would be to just cut this stuff here and leave the mids and highs, which is a completely different sound. Most EQs tend to sound aggressive when boosting and smooth when cutting. So let's see what that sounds like. And I'll boost the volume overall to make up for that cut. So, same result of having a flat, uh, flat sounding song, but it's a little smoother and softer and the high end sounds more natural. Which may or may not be what you want. Anyhow, we're starting to get into things from the next segment, but now you've seen what equalizers do.